Good morning, everyone. What time is it? It's time to study the chronon field theory. My name is Sam Wagnin, and I'm a father of the theory. I proposed the theory in my PhD dissertation in 1984. The thesis, the PhD thesis, is available via the Library of Congress and United Microfish International, UMI, which I believe has been absorbed by uh, ProQuest, but I'm not quite sure. The Cronon field theory went through two phases. Stage one, my PhD, um, and then 30 years with no responses <laughs> and no reactions, and it just went dormant. And then about 10 years ago, Eitan Suchard discovered my work and recast it in geometric terms. My original thesis was algebraic. And he, of course, developed it beyond recognition. And the Cronon field theory is as much his as mine and possibly more his than mine. Today, I would like to give you an overview of both my work and Suchard's work. Now, physicists would benefit from this video the most. Laymen would find it a lot more difficult, but it does contain uh, philosophical nuggets. The philosophy of chronon field theory is very unusual. I don't want to tout my horn, but I'm getting used to it, so I would say it's groundbreaking. Okay, without further ado, to my coffee and to the chronon field theory. In my work, chronons are time quarks, the time elementary particles. Now, nothing's, there's nothing new about this. This has been proposed 200, 250 years ago, and numerous physicists have worked along these lines. Some of them regarded chronons as durations. Some of them regarded chronons as real particles. In my work, chronons are real particles. They are quarks. The interactions of chronons yields what we know as time. Not time with a t, a small t, which is the time measured by clocks, but time with a capital T, the concept of time, the dimension, if you wish. It is yielded by chronons interacting. Because there are various types of chronons in my work. They are like quarks, you know, up, down, etc., etc. The interactions between the various types also gives rise to the time arrow. There is a cancellation of kind going on, and what's left is the time asymmetry. Hence, the title of my work, Time Asymmetry Revisited. What about space-time? Space-time exists where the chronon wave function collapses. Space-time is an outcome of, the, of a collapse of a wave function. And the whole theory rests on a duality. You know, the basic duality in quantum mechanics is the wave-particle duality. The basic duality in chronon Cronon field theory is the potential event duality. Potentials and actual events or actualized events are facets of the same underlying unity, if not entity. This duality is crucial to the development of the theory. Now, because events and potentials are one and the same, in the chronon field theory, there's no particles. Particles are replaced by strings of collapse events. Particles actually are events in chronon field theory. That's why it's a time-oriented theory. Its basic building blocks are events and potentials for events rather than particles. The quantum mechanics of the theory is a quantum mechanics of events as well. 
not of particles. This is the introductory part. We'll go, we'll go deeper in a bit. Now, the chronon field is a field of events or perturbations, if you wish. It's a perturbative uh, uh, theory. It's a theory of perturbations. Time, with a small t, is time measured by clocks, is the outcome of interactions in the time field, in the field of time, with a capital T. And so, chronons are both potentials and actualized events. There is an open question, what causes the actualization? Do chronons self-actualize? Are they observer-dependent? In other words, is there a kind of Copenhagen interpretation of chronon field theory? Is there a need for an observer to collapse the wave function? Or is a collapse, sp collapse spontaneous, internally determined somehow? Be that as it may, the theory does not require gauge fields, as physicists among you surely have understood by now. And although gauge fields are not required, they emerge naturally in higher accelerations. Now, time space, as I said, is, a is the outcome of the collapse of a wave function. I don't know, no one can answer whether there's an, a mediation of an observer, whether the obs an observer collapses the wave function. But of course, you immediately, immediately begin, you can immediately see the religious implications. Because if the entire universe, if space-time is a collapse of a wave function, and if the collapse is dependent upon an observer, that observer, universal observer, might as well be called God. <laughs> it is ironic that an agnostic like me has led to God in his work. But, as I said, there, is, there are no assurances that the whole process is observer-mediated. What, um, what is postulated in my thesis is that all chronons uh, have been entangled at the moment of the Big Bang. There is a kind of an universal, a universe-wide entanglement of all chronons. In other words, all potentials and all actual, actualized events are entangled ab initio from the very beginning. And this is a, has enormous implications because it implies that the entire universe is essentially a quantum machine or a quantum device. And if it is, then our understanding of it currently is deeply flawed. The theory gives rise to the equivalence of uh, quantum field theories and so on and so forth. So the quantum field theory of chronon field theory is relativistic, actually, and in this sense, it's deterministic. The chronons are the field quanta, the quanta of the field. They are the excited states of the field. And the integration of everything is via quantum superpositions. It's quite a mouthful but physicists among you would surely understand. I indicated that chronon field theory is perturbative, there's perturbations. So there is a perturbative quantum field theory. Time from the Big Bang is mediated by chronons. The, there is an expansion, including an expansion of the metric. You could even conceive of, um, of the whole thing as a phonon of the metric time as a, as a phonon of the metric. And um, uh, there are many ways to look at time uh, through the chronon field uh, theory. There are no bound states in any case. The excitations that I've mentioned, the states um, of the chronons, they are stochastic perturbances. They are kinds of vibrations, if you wish. And in this sense, there's an affinity between superstring theories and chronon field theory, but as distinct from superstring theories, in chronon field theory, there's no need 
for extra dimensions, which render, renders chronon field theory a lot more grounded and a lot more easily falsifiable. It yields falsifiable predictions. While many superstring theories um, are lacking when it comes to yielding falsifiable predictions. Now the cumulative uh, the cumulative perturb perturbances that I that I mentioned create a distortion of space-time, and this is what we know as curvature. These are the basics, the philosophical basics of the of the theory, and they've all been proposed in my PhD thesis in 1984. And then, as I said, there was a hi hiatus of about 30 years. And then Eitan Sachet, who is nothing short of a genius in my view, came on the scene. And his contributions have transformed chronon field theory. First of all, he afforded it a distinct geometric or visualization dynamic, which was missing. It was totally abstract and algebraic, therefore very limited. And the second thing he did, he added numerous insights and literally transformed it beyond recognition, I would say. It's perhaps much more his work than mine. Um, such as suggested that uh, there is a universal scalar uh, field of time, but time is not a universal coordinate. He says that particles interacting within non-gravitational fields are seen as clocks whose trajectory is not Minkowski uh, geodesic. So in my work, chronons are ideal clocks and they mediate time. They are, uh, the, the relationship between chronons and time is like a relationship between the Higgs boson, uh, boson and mass. That's in my work. But in Sachet's work, um, he goes a lot deeper and he says that a field in which a small enough clock is not geodesic can be described by a scalar field of time with non-zero curvature gradient. Scalar field, scalar field is either real, acceleration of charge matter, neutral clocks, or imaginary, acceleration of Majorana type matter clocks. Be that as it may, it preserves the scalar nature of, of uh, the scalar nature of time. Scalar field, the scalar field adds information to space time. This information is not anticipated by the metric tensor alone. And it can, the uh, time in this case cannot be realized as a coordinate because it cannot be measured from a reference sub-manifold along different curves. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of math in, in, in this. There's manifolds and Lie algebras and so on and so forth. Those of you who would like to review the math, there's a link in the description. Click on it and you will be exposed to my math and Eitan's, Eitan Sachin's math in various papers. Uh, published in various academic journals and so on and so forth. You're, down, you're invited to download them, review the math, and please alert us to any errors, any mistakes in thinking, any mistakes in calculations, and so on and so forth. We are looking forward to input. We are hungry for input, actually. So the non-geodesic alignment is attributed to electromagnetism, or electromagnetic phenomena. Both the mass and the electric charge, in this case, generate gravity. I'll come to it in a minute. It's a very controversial aspect of Eitan Sacher's work. Charge, unlike inertial mass, uh, is coupled to non-geodesic, to a non-geodesic vector field. But they both yield gravity. Again, I will come to it in a minute. So only the entire energy momentum tensor has vanishing divergence, misalignment of physically accessible events in an observer's space-time, 
plus gravity is con a controlling response by volumetric contraction of the observer spacetime in the direction where events bend or are accelerated, put together, this gives the main pillar of such as um, work. Particle, the work, such as work yields literally all of known physics. From these basic assumptions, mine and later his, in the entire field of physics can be derived and is derived. Anything from particle mass ratios, fine structure constant, the physical meaning of, of 3D foliations, Bekenstein Hawking entropy to area constant, acceleration field strain, Q, I mean, a quantum mechanics, I mean, everything is, uh, comes, emerges naturally out of the theory, which is an, an excellent indication, I think. It's an indication that the theory is onto something and touches upon some foundational basic facet of existence, of reality. Okay, in such as work, in Big Bang, in Big Bang Manifold, field, the field is the upper limit on measurable time by interacting clocks, yes. And from, so from, he goes from each event to the singularity as a limit. And that yields fascinating outcomes. I again encourage you to go to the link in the description to download the papers and read them. They are not only mathematically sophisticated, but they are, I think in all these papers, there's a lot of ph philosophical, um, how to put it without sounding too grandiose, philosophical alternatives, shall we say, which are thought-provoking in my view. And I'm not only referring to my work, I'm actually referring mostly to Sacha's work. In the in the sitter anti de sitter space-time, the reference sub-manifolds from which time is measured along integral curves, they, they constitute all the events in which scalar field, the scalar field is zero. Matter in the Einstein-Grossman equation is replaced by action of acceleration field, the action of, acce of the acceleration field. So it's geometric action, not foreseen by the metric alone. As I said, this is Eitan's major contribution, the geometrization of the whole, of the whole thing. It's, it's a theory of casual sets, in effect. Space-time exists where chronon wave, the chronon wave function collapses. Particles are replaced by strings of collapse events. And there's a quantum theory of events, not of particles. Again, reverting to my original work in 1984. I mentioned that there is a part of Eitan's work which is controversial, even in my eyes, and which is not mentioned in my original work, nor does it emerge from it. But Eitan's geometric development of the work, plus input from many other scientists and physicists around the world, led Eitan uh, to the following. This new formation of matter in Eitan's work replaces the stress-energy-momentum tensor. Positive charge manifests attracting gravity and stronger repelling acceleration field, which repels even uncharged particles that measure proper time. In other words, particles that have a rest mass. Negative charge manifests repelling anti-gravity and stronger acceleration field that attracts even uncharged particles. Now this, of course, accounts for dark matter, dark energy and all, but it also yields <laughs> a startling prediction about electrogravity, about the interchange between gravity and electric charge. There's even a patent granted <laughs> to Aitam such as based on this um, discovery. Oh, it's very controversial. And the interchange between 
electric charge and, and gravity is not entirely clear in my view. There's a lot more, more work to be done, but it's more robust and rigorous than one would have assumed. In other words, it breaks through the prejudices of previous mathematical theories and forces you, forces me, for example, as a physicist, to contemplate it, to think whether it's, it's true. If it is true, it's one of the greatest technological breakthroughs ever. It means that we could convert gravity to electricity and vice versa. We could develop anti-gravity and so on and so forth. I will not go into all this. Sounds It begins to sound a lot like science fiction. Cronon field theory is a major theoretic, theoretical reconception of physics as a way to understand reality. It dispenses with secondary properties. Everything emerges from essentially a single basic underlying assumption. Potentials are events. Everything are everything is events. There are no particles, they're only events. Quantum theory of events. Space time is a collapse of a wave function, probability, in other words, potentials. And, and space-time as an event is also a potential because it remains um, in a superposition state until an eventual collapse. The collapse is mediated via an observer or is spontaneous and self-generating. That's besides the point. And it's, it's a lot more... I would say philosophical than, than it's a lot more philosophy than physics, but everything is about possibilities, probabilities, even events, which in classical quantum mechanics and so on and so forth are distinguished from probabilities. Even particles, which in classical quantum mechanics and so on and so forth are distinguished from probabilities. In chronon field theory, are they are probabilities. Our existence, therefore, is a potential. Now, the potential manifests, becomes an actualized event, but the distinction is spur spurious and unnecessary in the chronon field theory. This single basic assumption gives rise to all of physics as we know it. While in other theories in physics, there are multiple suppositions and assumptions and entities, a multiplication of entities. Even in the simplest theories, for example, special, special relativity, or there's still half a dozen, if not a dozen, entities. It's a strong indicator that something is wrong with these theory, theories. There's no parsimony. Or comes razor. A theory of everything would be based on a single principle and perhaps a single entity, for sure. Simplicity, aesthetics, beauty, symmetry are built into reality. And the chronon field theory, to the best of my knowledge, is the closest we've ever got, gotten to this, because it has a single assumption, not even an entity, just a single assumption. And yet it yields all known physics and provides falsifiable predictions. I hope it gets taken by the physics community, analyzed, possibly debunked and falsified. That's the way of science. But it deserves attention. I'm saying this not on behalf of myself. I'm far removed. I contrib my, last contribution, my last contributions have to do mostly with the mathematics of the theory. But I'm saying this on behalf of uh, science itself. I think there's a challenging idea here, and I think it should not be neglected. It should be looked into. Thank you for listening.